Recovery is a journey, and it's a journey I, was, I started with about um, four years ago, back, as I say, for another piece. It's a really dynamic uh, process, recovery, and um, international experience tells us it can take a very long time. Um, it's easy to be impatient, but it could take 15 or 20 years. Um, it doesn't mean things are happening slowly, but it can seem like that at times. It's simply that you know, planning, leading and coordinating a rebuild like this um, has been and will continue to be a very complex uh, task. There's a myriad number of players, both domestically and internationally, when you think about insurance, for example, involved. Um, and it's hard to get everybody all lined up and working in the, in the one direction. Overseas experience tells us that there are a number of phases to recovery, and I want to talk about that today. Uh, we've, we've adopted a United Nations model as the framework that we're thinking about recovery through, and that's that there are four basic steps. The first is an emergency phase. The second, a restoration phase. The third, a reconstruction phase. And the last is vision. Now, these are not sequential, even though I talked about them in sequential terms. They're, in fact, parallel. So I just want to talk about those a little bit. We're in the tail end of the emergency phase. Now, it didn't finish immediately, um, but the, the emergency phase is where the immediate impacts on people's well-being are addressed. And there are still some impacts on people's well-being that need to be addressed and finished very quickly. We need to make sure that quite soon there are none of those. The restoration phase, if you like, began right back at September 2010 and um, again in, in February 2011. And it's focused on the restoration of the, the essential services that we all need, like drinking water and sewage disposal, stormwater management roads and pavements. And they've introduced that wonderful phrase into the Canterbury lexicon of horizontal infrastructure, which we probably didn't know about some time ago. Um, and the, the program of restoration works well advanced. And when some of the notes for this talk were being prepared, I wrote the figure 60 per cent while I was talking to Ian Campbell about half an hour ago, and he said, oh, 65 is more like it. So 65 per cent looking across the horizontal infrastructure work of Christchurch to repair these things that are required uh, standard. Um, and yes, I know the roads are still pretty rough, but you'd expect to do the stuff below the ground before you finish the top off. And I'm afraid that orange uh, road cones and rough roads are with us for a little while to come. But we can have confidence. Uh, to a lesser extent, the reconstruction phase, if you like, also began in, in 2010 and, and 11, as reconstruction activities, as well as restoration, got underway almost immediately. And that's, phase, that's a phase that's really ramping up now as both uh, private and public sector development work gets underway. Uh, the majority of work is still to be done, and it will take some time. And it's, it's worth remembering, I think, if you think about you know, how long, you know, we've talked times about we're now four years into it. Well, since the last really big earthquake, we're only three years into it. And sometimes it's good to just remember that, um, that we've, we, we probably could not have, as a community, have done things a lot faster um, until the ground really did stop shaking adequately to, to plan with confidence. And while the term reconstruction uh, conjures images of bricks and mortar that we've talked about today. I think it's important to remember that we're rebuilding a city, not just rebuilding, not just um, reconstruction, uh, constructing buildings. And a city is nothing without its people. Um, and we do know that one of the most difficult phases uh, of a recovery in a psychosocial sense comes in years three to seven uh, following a disaster of this magnitude. And you know, at first, after an earthquake, and we've heard about it today, people really pull together and support one another and get on with it. And, but it takes, it takes a long time to work your way through a recovery like this, and disillusionment can set in. And if we look to Japan and what happened at Kobe um, about uh, four to five years after their big earthquake, some of their worst um, mental health issues started to, to um, be seen. And, you know, well-being well -being in, in people doesn't really um, improve until people are able to move on with their lives in a new context. And at an individual level, for some people who were uh, seriously affected by losing loved ones or by injuries to themselves, this recovery will clearly take much, much longer. Um, at the Greater Christchurch level, I think there is, there's a huge amount to appreciate and celebrate. 
um, I think um, we're on track for success, success both physically and, and psychologically as a city. And it's my prediction that this year, 2015, will be a year that people remember as a real year of momentum, where a lot of the groundwork that's been done in the last three to four years um, uh, enables traction to really uh, pick up. Um, and the Minister has talked about some of the work in the reconstruction of the central city, some of the stuff that's going ahead uh, remarkably quickly at the moment, and it's, if, if anybody gets a chance to have a wander around, I urge you to do so. Many of you probably will, but you know, the bus interchange, justice and emergency services, some of the stuff in the innovation precinct, the CBD generally, and, and that's, you know, yes, it's bricks and mortar, but it's bringing people back into the, the central city, and that's what we'll see um, in the, in the rather near future. And looking beyond the central city, Canterbury's population has almost returned to uh, pre-quake levels. 9,600 more people employed in Canterbury now than 12 months ago. Um, but as I said earlier, it's in a challenging period and years three to seven after a disaster like this will be where some of the psychosocial impacts um, are hardest and we need to remember that and plan for it. Every six months, um, Sarah, who I work with, um, conducts a wellbeing survey. On the plus side, it tells us most of the graphs are moving in the right direction. Things should, should go up are going up. Things that should go down are going down. But that's not um, absolutely even across Christchurch. And there are some people for whom this is still very tough. And we need to keep focused uh, on those people. Um, the, the voluntary offer that's been made to uh, people in the red zones to um, sell the houses to the Crown and move on um, has been, I think, extremely successful. There's been more than um, 8,000 homes were zoned uh, red and in the flatlands 97% of people who had that offer have, have uh, settled and moved on and in the Port Hills 89% of eligible property owners have also accepted the offer and in the process of working with them now. And of all those dwellings, um, we've currently removed 6,500, so there's still a few to go. Um, and also in the Port Hills, there's, um, where it's really, really complex, tough, dangerous work, which we're, I'm very happy to see it going slowly because it's more likely to be safe. And, um, but that's really significant parts of the, the, the journey uh, of recovery. Um, we're all aware that CERA as an organisation has a finite shelf life in, in terms of its legislation. The CERA Act finishes in April next year. Um, and I think there may be a, a misconception that the work of CERA itself shuts down. And I've heard people say that, oh well, you'll sort of walk out the door and flick the lights out and that'll be it. But no, we're, we're, I th think of it as a large house really with lots of windows and um, they're all burning brightly and gradually we're turning the odd light off in the odd room as work comes to an end. Other rooms, we're dimming it down as the work slows down. And by April next year and beyond, I think we'll see some of the lights really burning brightly on an ongoing basis, but some of the tenants might have changed in the house. So the work program will continue as, as we plan for the future. And we have an advisory board on transition helping us with that journey right now. Um, where, it's, where it has, the government has been able to use the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Act to, to cut through to help um, expedite a speedy recovery and we're looking at what of those powers may be needed in the future to continue this um, recovery at pace. But going back to the phases of recovery, I talked about the last phase being vision. And as I pointed out, it's not sequential. Vision starts from the day after the earthquake. And about at this point, I think it's getting extremely important. We're all starting to visualise starting with share an idea, really, which the Minister talked about, about what the future of the central city, the larger city, greater Christchurch, within the Canterbury context, which we heard about earlier, what it might look like. That vision is one that is a vision for the people of greater Christchurch to develop. That's the challenge, and that's the opportunity, and we've got to keep seizing that over the next 12 months. Thank you.